Hmm. So what do the studies say about flipped learning? Welcome back to another episode of Mark Teach Geek. In my last episode, the very first one, I actually introduced what was going on in my uh, geometry classroom after I flipped my geometry lessons. And I'm having very good uh, feedback still on that and the data is looking very nice as well. Um, but in that one, I mentioned that there were some controversies over the peer-reviewed studies on the flipped classroom as to whether or not they actually work. <clears throat> And uh, so I thought I'd dedicate this episode to just that very topic. What about the peer-reviewed studies on the flipped classroom? What do they actually say and why are their results kind of a mixed bag? First of all, what's all the hype about? The uh, flipped classroom in the last couple of years has been getting a lot of attention and a lot of uh, press, especially since uh, Salman Khan started Khan Academy and Bill Gates Foundation is behind it. A lot of teachers have just randomly adopted this this way of teaching without really thinking very hardly uh, hard or hardly at all about how it will affect their uh, students education in, in the learning environment. And it might just come down to the fact that we love our shiny little rectangles, those touch screen things that we can do all sorts of things on them. And this is one way, uh, maybe another excuse to use those in our classroom. So what do the peer reviewed studies say about the flip, flipped classroom and uh, academic outcomes? One study done by the Harvey Mudd College in Claremont, California um, came out with the results and I think the direct quote was something along the lines of it might not be worth the hassle. And uh, what they had done is they took four classrooms, these are STEM classrooms which would be science, technology, engineering and math and they flipped those classrooms for a period of time and then studied the results. What they found was there's a negligible difference between a traditional classroom of lecture than study to um, just studying with the lectures done by video at home. And so they said that it may not be worth the teacher's trouble. Another study uh, done by the nonprofit organization Flipped Learning Network, you can kind of tell that this one's a little bit biased, they said that their results produced 67% higher uh, standardized test scores, which is ridiculous ridiculously great. It's almost too good to be true. In fact, I, I think it probably is too good to be true. So the Harvey Mudd study and the uh, Flip Learning Network studies are, are kind of two extremes and I suspect that the truth is somewhere in between those two studies. I've read of about 27 uh, studies, peer-reviewed studies on the Flip Learning uh, concept and, and I can kind of generally boil them all down to just a, f a few facts. In all of the studies they showed that scores would increase by anywhere from 1 to 7 percent on average which doesn't sound like a big change but if you have 88 percent in a class and you flip the class and that student gets an extra two and a half percent that is kind of a big deal. So one to seven percent is actually bigger than it really seems. Here it is, student and teacher feedback. If I were to condense all of the studies down to just a few points, this is what we find. First of all, student feedback is pretty consistently positive. It was on average 65 to 80 percent roughly approved of the flipped classroom model. Now teacher feedback was decidedly different. Um, it, it fell along subject lines. First of all, math, science, technology, and education uh, type teachers, their classrooms, they really approved of this model. They really liked the flipped classroom. Whereas the humanities, your language arts and um, you, you know, all of those soft sciences like social science and uh, those teachers were either neutral to negative. So why do these studies all seem to get mixed results? What's the big deal? Well, first of all, and this is my take, I think that they cannot account for a teacher's teaching style. How much passion a teacher has for a subject, how creative they are in presenting it can make a dramatic influence on how much the students pay attention to the materials and indirectly how well they do on a standardized test. The second criticism I have of these studies is that they really emphasize a lot of video lectures. So the teacher creates these lectures and the students watch them and so on. There are so many other ways to learn than just through a 
lecture. And uh, that's traditional classroom or flipped, it doesn't matter. So they focus probably too heavily on the video lecture. My third and probably most important criticism is that the studies will come into a school or university and they'll apply this flipped model to all subjects regardless of what they are. And anybody knows you can't teach physics the same way that you teach uh, in English class. That just isn't the way it works. So to apply one model to all subjects regardless of the best way to teach them is probably not the best approach. So that's probably why our results on these studies are kind of uh, controversial and mixed. It, the flipped classroom is a tool to be used, but it shouldn't be used in every instance. Thanks for watching and I hope you tune in next time for my next video. And oh, wait for this. For your information, I've included several links below this video that go directly to studies or abstracts of studies done on flipped learning. I do recommend that you read the materials as well as to give you a better understanding of this style of teaching. If you're a teacher, I highly recommend that you read the materials before switching your class to a flipped style. It is my opinion that teachers should not make such a fundamental change without seriously thinking about how it will impact their students' education.